Okay, I'm doing a brake overhaul on this Honda Ridgeline. You can check out that other video where I'm putting Honda Pilot brakes, brake rotors, calipers, and pads on my 2007 Honda Ridgeline. You can check that video out. The Pilot brakes are bigger and uh, hopefully make the truck stop a little better. But while I was in here, I noticed something. These control arms here, the bushings, you can see right in there, are really quite cracked. Okay, and then there's a bushing there, and then there's one over here, which looks okay. Um, and then, of course, there's a ball joint. Lower ball joint as well that uh, that's attached to that control arm. So I want to do a quick video of the replacement of this entire control arm with the ball joint uh, included. Okay, so here's what I bought. I actually got these on Amazon. Uh, two control arms for under $100 each. And they come with the ball joint all ready to go. There's a little protective cover there. New ball joint. Castle nut goes on top. So when we take the old control arm out, the first step is to remove this little pin. It's easier to show here than it is on the on the truck. It's hard to get the camera in there. But once this is tightened down, this is just like a fancy cotter pin. It goes through this hole, right? And clips. Actually here. Just clips. And it just clips in there like that, so it prevents the prevents the nut from coming off. Not that it ever would, but it's just an added safety precaution. And then to get it off. And then to get it off, you might need some pliers on the truck when you take the old one off. You just kind of got to pry this guy out and up. They're a little bit awkward. Out and up. And then this can come out. So to get the old one off the truck, then you can remove the old castle nut and proceed with pressing out the ball joint. Okay, so there's a bolt that goes through this back bushing here starts at the bottom it's a 19 millimeter bolt so you can get probably in a big breaker bar to break that loose uh, fortunately there's not a nut on top here it's just the threads are right into the body so you just need the you just need the socket or uh, impact or breaker bar or whatever on the bottom and you can loosen that one off And then at the front right here, this is a 22 millimeter bolt. You can loosen that one off. I've loosened them. I haven't taken them right out yet. <coughs> and then here's the ball joint. You can see there's the castle nut and I've loosened it. And now comes the hard part. Okay, I was hoping to use one of these traditional ball joint separator tools where you, there's a big bolt that this comes with that pushes this. So how this works. is your ball joint separator tool would in theory go under here like this and then this lever would sit on top of that uh, that castle nut and you would then put the bolt in the bottom here and crank this up and press out the ball joint separate it from the from the uh, spindle with a bunch of banging of a hammer as well it might help too uh, that doesn't work because these jaws on this tool are too narrow. They just won't get in there far enough. So you can't get on top of that. So I have two of these separator tools, two different sizes. Neither of them fit in this tight space in here. Uh, so 
I'm going to resort to using one of these guys, a little ball joint removal tool. And I'm going to put that in there and just bang on it like crazy with a hammer. You also may need to apply heat here with a, like a propane torch. It doesn't hurt to spray some PB blaster all over the place. See if that gets in. And then basically what I did is I, um, I left the castle nut on here so this doesn't go flying down when it releases. So it's loose. And with some banging on this, you see I've already actually banged on it and it did pop loose after a lot of banging. So you can see the ball joint has popped out of the spindle. And now it's just a matter of taking this castle bolt off, or castle nut rather, And once we get the other bolts from the control arm out, we should be able to pop this out. All right, now with the two bolts out and the ball joint free at the bottom, we're able to push down. down, pry down on the, uh, pop the ball joint out, right out. Right. It's totally free. And then the front of the control arm can be popped out, kind of slid around like this, which then allows us to pull the back bushing out. And there, it's out. Oh, with a bunch of dust. Now the old ball joint you can see has seen better days. Part of that's from the fork banging against it, but you can see there's some springs that have popped out and it's very loose. So this truck was running and driving fine. It didn't really exhibit any symptoms of bad ball joints or anything. It was just the visual bushings that I noticed. But clearly there's a lot of play in there. And uh, the truck has about 125,000 miles on it. Could have went a little further maybe, but I think it's uh, just good to replace everything. Right now the new one you can see how stiff this ball joint is like it really takes quite a bit of effort to move it <coughs> all right so to put the new one back in first we'll go with the back bushing Like that. Hopefully it goes in nicely. Just kind of leave it loose now. And then we'll swing around to the front bushing. I'm gonna bend this down to get it underneath. It's a bit awkward doing this, but just fight with it a little bit. And then we'll just pop the castle nut on top there to hold it for a minute. 
<coughs> While we get our front 22 millimeter bolt in there, we'll have to wiggle this around to fit it in. And then the bottom, uh, or the back 19 millimeter bolt up from the bottom. Now, I'm having trouble getting the back bolt in there because you can see, uh, because the truck is, is jacked up and the, the spindle's just hanging. Um, the bolt won't, the bolt won't line up. So I think what I'm gonna do <coughs> is get this ball joint hooked up. All right. Unfortunately, there's not room for a socket or much else in there, so you have to deal with a 19 millimeter wrench. Okay. You can only turn it about a quarter turn at a time, but that's okay. I'm going to suck that ball joint up into the spindle. And then once we do that, I think I can jack underneath the ball joint here and um, jack up so that the, the um, control arm's a little more level so we can line up that back bushing bolt. And that way the suspension will be loaded as well so we can tighten the bolts at that point in time. You don't want to tighten those bolts with the suspension fully extended like this because then when you set it back down you could put a lot of pressure on those bolts. The torque spec for this is quite high. You can't get a torque wrench in there so you just have to do it with a with a wrench. I'm just going to do it as tight as I can and then put the that pin in, the castle pin. Whatever the hell you call it. Put that cotter pin in. Mm -hmm. Now we should be up in there because I can see the holes lining up. Just... And we'll just tighten this all the way. Now the hole for the cotter pin runs about like this. So we'll just tighten it a little bit more than we should be able to. I can feel the hole there. It's just not quite ready to go. A little bit more. Just with the help of these guys here. Yeah. And that just pops in like that and stays like that. All right, this back bolt, the 19 millimeter, was a bit of a pain to get threaded up, but eventually I was able to kind of pry and move this control arm around a little bit, and eventually I got it, uh, just with the impact, it caught the threads. Uh, so there are torque ratings on these. They're quite high. I'll, uh, I'll post them later. Um, Basically, what we're going to want to do now is what, we're, what we'll do is we'll tighten up the these. Now, I've preloaded the truck, so I've jacked uh, up to basically put the weight on the spindle as if it was sitting on a, on the tire on the ground. Right? You don't want to tighten the bushing bolts up when the suspension's fully relaxed and fully extended, because then. Um, I'm not sure if these are affected in that way, but a lot of the time when you set the truck on the ground or the car on the ground, the bearing, the bushings are twisted and you find a couple of months later, the bushings start ripping apart because, um, you know, you ha don't have the vehicle in the, you didn't have the vehicle in the neutral driving position when you tighten the bolts. So I've got the suspension preloaded to tighten these up, I'll tighten them to the torque spec. And the front one's a 22 millimeter. We'll get a torque wrench on these later and tighten them. And that's it. Now we can continue with my brake job. Again, check out that video. Uh, but I just wanted to show this quick video of replacing the lower control arms with an aftermarket uh, set that are readily available on these Hondas with the ball joint and bushings and everything all in one piece. 
Uh, there's different brands out there. This particular brand, this particular brand was Tor, T-O-R. There's a bunch of equivalent MAS, Alstrom, Dorman, Raybestos numbers. Uh, it's a popular, you know, made in, well, these are made in Taiwan actually, but a popular aftermarket susp steering and suspension part provider. I uh, don't know if it's the greatest quality, if it's as good as OEM or not, but you never know nowadays. You know, sometimes people put brand name stuff on and it just doesn't last and the Chinese stuff is fine. Sometimes the Chinese stuff isn't good. Everything's made in China anyways. It doesn't really matter, right? So um, even the Honda stuff, I think, is made in China. So we're going to try these, see how they, they hold up. But uh, I mean, obviously, a huge company like this, they can't put junk out or they wouldn't be in business. It's uh, it's you know one of the biggest uh, suspension providers out there. So I'm gonna hope for the best and uh, see how these go. Thanks for watching. And again, check out the other videos on this truck. The brake upgrade is gonna be really cool. I think um, I'll put uh, I'll put a link for that and and some cards up in the video as well. Thank you.